Welcome to the Joyful Nourishment Podcast. This is a podcast about a relationship with food and eating, body image, eating disorder recovery, mental health, and more. I am your host, Lynn Thorstensen, a registered nutrition therapist and body image coach based in the west of Ireland. And I'm so glad that you're here. So welcome to another solo episode with me, Lynn Thorstensen, a nutritional therapist. And in today's episode, I really wanted to talk about something that I find is, I mean, I think it can be life changing in your relationship with food. And particularly if you're coming from a background of binge and emotional eating. But before we dive into that, I do want to just remind you that I am currently taking on some new one to one clients and I have space for uh, about a handful right now. So if that's you and you want to book in for a discovery call or an exploration call, uh, you can find that in the show notes. Or if you know somebody who is looking for support, um, yeah, please feel free to forward this uh, booking link to them. And like I said, it's in the show notes. So in today's episode, what I really want to talk about is the concept or the practice, maybe we should say, about permission to eat all foods and I think this is um, at least from my understanding that this is a cornerstone of what we call intuitive eating or making peace with food. I think making peace with food is the third principle if I remember correctly but basically what they call making peace with food is this concept and this idea or this practice that we give ourselves permission to eat all foods. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this because if you see that on an Instagram graphic or just this sort of short snapshot of, you know, you have permission to eat all foods, a lot of things comes up for people. And I'm thinking maybe you're similar. And I think for me, this practice of giving myself permission to eat all foods was also one of the major pivot moments in my own eating reco- eating disorder or binge eating disorder recovery journey. But what does it mean? What is it we're talking about when we're saying give yourself permission to eat all foods whenever you want, however you want? Um, and I think this is the kind of like where it gets muddled because when we hear that it's like well so I should just eat you know cookies and pizzas and chips and crisps and cakes and whatever no it doesn't mean that it actually means that what we're trying to do and I think what the core of it this is to challenge all the internalized food rules that we have we're also looking at moving away from the idea that there's good foods and bad foods and moving towards this place that all foods are morally neutral. And that's a question that I often put to my clients early on in our work together. It's this idea of like, what would it be like if foods were morally neutral? And Sometimes we get kind of stumped and people get stumped on this because it's like, well, what do you mean? You know, like there's a, the nutrition values and content is different in a bar of chocolate to say, you know, carrots. And yes, of course, different foods have different nutrient profiles, different foods provide us with different things, whether that is nutrition needs, energy needs, but also like connection to culture connection to people and different variations of taste satisfaction but the key here is that when we are letting foods and all foods be morally nutrient and thus moving away from this good and bad foods is that we don't have to hold on to this internalized shame or internalized guilt um, that we are being good and I mean good in the sense of like who we are at the core dep- you know in relation to the food choices we're making I think that in and of itself can be 
really liberating. Because what it also means is that when food is morally neutral and you're moving away from seeing some foods as good or bad and those depending on the choices you're making, you being a good or bad person. From here, when we let that go, when we sort of let that go to the side, we can be much more curious about what types of food A, that we actually like eating, that tastes good, that is enjoyable, satisfying. But also we can become really curious about how the food we eat makes us feel. Because now we're kind of coming at it with a direct experience versus when it's clouded with this moral judgment. Because what you might find is that sometimes the foods that we or society puts in this quote-unquote good bucket like vegetables, salads, um, whole foods is that if you're eating a lot of those it might be putting your digestive system under pressure and you might feel bloated all the time and uncomfortable and it's hard to figure out what I'm eating all these good foods why am I not feeling well and When we're eating, say, and what often happens then when people let go of of the food rules and you allow yourself to eat all the stuff that's been forbidden, you might find that, yes, it might taste good, but certain foods does not agree with your digestive system or maybe gives you hives or headaches or make you feel sluggish or tired. And that's a different thing to the moral judgment of feeling bad for eating, I don't know, a couple of biscuits or a few bars of chocolates or something like that. So really moving away from these internalized food rules often that we've learned from society and people around us and moving into this place where food is morally neutral. And I think We need to start there. We need to think about that maybe as a prerequisite to move towards this place where we give ourselves permission to eat all foods. But the thing as well, and I think this is another place where people can get stuck, is just because you have permission, give yourself permission to eat all foods, it doesn't mean that you have to eat everything all the time. It is just giving you more space for choice. And to, for making those choices, to, you know, what in, in a sense that aligns to what you need in any given moment. So we're not sort of beholden to rigid plans or rigid ideas, but that there's a much more flexibility, you know, how you're navigating your food choices. So often when I propose this idea to clients that you know what would it be like if you gave yourself permission to eat all foods and you know whenever you kind of wanted them and I think two things tends to happen there can be a deep sigh of relief like and some of that relief might come from deep down and knowing that this means there's no more restriction and there can be a lot of peace and freedom within that a lot of space and kind of just, ah, I know, no more restriction, right? But then what tends to happen is we bump up against a couple of challenges. And I wanted to name them here so that you can think about those if, you know, you're, you're trying this or you're working towards food freedom. Um, and just being aware of some of the pitfalls or some of the challenges that tend to creep up. And particularly, I think, when we're working through this on our own, because when we are working with with somebody, we can bring these fears and challenges to the professional we're working with and we can work through it together. And that can be very helpful. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it on your own. Just be aware of that the initial sense of freedom that comes with, oh gosh, no more restriction, that feels great. Um, but then, you know, the thoughts might creep in and kind of say, well, will this, this just mean that I'm going to keep binging forever? Because it can feel a bit like binge eating, in particular if you just come off a very restrictive diet and a, a period of, of restriction because your body is trying to make up for the shortfall 
and your mind is kind of like continues rebelling against the restriction that you've that been self-imposed so making sure that you know it might feel like that in the beginning and I think sometimes it's necessary but it's not supposed to feel like that forever so ways that kind of can keep us stuck in the cycle where and keep us stuck in a in a sense that it feels like we're just binging though what you're working on is giving yourself permission to eat all foods is that in the back of your mind it's like oh my god I'm going to gain weight and that's the worst thing that could happen so that means that you might just get stuck in giving yourself pseudo restriction and you know um it just feel it just feels too much so if you do gain weight it just that feels like too much and unbearable and you just go back to another diet or there's kind of this um conditional permission like this pseudo condition which is like okay I can let myself have the biscuits or some of the stuff that I like that I wasn't really allowing myself to have before but I can only have X amount of whatever it is, the cookies or squares of chocolate or slice of cake or whatever it is. Um, And then, you know, I can only have it if after I've exercised or after I've done this and that. And that is something that's quite common because it feels like to people like, but I've given up dieting. I'm not dieting anymore. I don't understand what I'm still kind of feeling pulled to like rebel against things and eating foods that I don't always want and that is often what's happening that there is um kind of a conditional permission um and there might be still a lot of mental restriction going on even though outwardly outwardly it looks like you've kind of loosened the reins a bit um you know feeling safe and food safety and what I mean by that is there is a part of us that needs to know that if I want this food again, it's going to be available. And if food is scarce, then of course, this is just going to make it more difficult to stop when feeling full. Because in order to be able to stop when we're feeling full, we do need to know and it's we can know it intellectually, but also our bodies need to know that it's safe to stop now because when I want that food again or when I get hungry again, there's going to be food available so I can eat that, which means I don't have to kind of eat it all now or trying to eat it to get it out of the house. There might be other things like that keeps it stuck in this kind of, you know, conditional permission space or pseudo permission space. And there might be fears about health, that if I allow myself to have more, say, sugary foods that might have been often, that's going to crash my health. And to that I want to say is that if you're restricting those kind of foods, it's leading you to binge on them, then like, how well is that restriction working? Because what tends to happen, and this can take a while because I, I believe this is a practice to undo and unlearn and untangle ourselves from all the restrictive patterns that we've that we've been engaging in, is that when you know and deep down know that I can have this food again, these biscuits or whatever, I don't need to go back. I don't need to eat them all now. I can stop when I've had as many as feels good because... I can have some more tomorrow or at the next meal or as soon as I get hungry. And that takes practice. And that takes practice over time because the longer you've been restricting or you've been dieting on and off and cycle through this diet deprivation binge cycle, the longer it's going to take for your body to regain the trust that you mean what you say that when you're letting go of restriction and now giving yourself permission to eat all foods like it you have to keep showing up for yourself in this way that okay it's safe to stop it because I can have it again tomorrow and we and, and we have to mean it so I think you know those sort of things and I that that can trip people up and that can keep you stuck so often as well 
you know, we're stuck in this, we might call it the diet deprivation binge cycle. And I've written about that. So I link to that in the show notes and would swing from rigid dieting, kind of letting go and then go all the way over to the binging and the chaos and the chaotic eating. And what we're trying to find is this middle ground. And by giving yourself permission, unconditional permission to eat all foods in this morally neutral way, what you're doing is you're creating more space for choice, more space for curiosity and more space for flexibility. But I do want to say that, of course, the caveat is that, you know, food needs like enough food so that you're not hungry has to be available. And again, we can't always have whatever we want at any time of the day we want. And I mean, that's that's fine too. Like at the very base of this is to make sure that you're eating enough and regular. And then from there is letting in more of the foods that maybe you've been restricting or told yourself you couldn't have and that you as a result ended up binging on because they were forbidden. So in that sense, you know, that as soon as you had some, You've back to this thinking of like, oh God, I broke the diet or the day is ruined and I might as well eat the rest of the package and then just not enjoying it. Because the thing is, when we're giving ourselves unconditional permission to eat all foods, if you want to have those biscuits, you can have them and you just have as many as you enjoy. And when you stop enjoying them, you put them away until you decide you want some more. And they were kind of free. And it just, it might sound really crazy, I think, sometimes. But what I have found, both for myself and with the many people I worked with over the years, is that this can be a game changer. This can create so much space and choice, for choice and flexibility, that and, and helps really to lessen the binge eating. And when we are working on separating out what's deprivation-driven eating that comes from this place of restriction that is a backlash to the backlash from the restrictive eating to what is true what i call true emotional eating when we're using food to cope we really have to make sure that we're healing this deprivation driven eating and one way of doing that that can really help us is this letting go of food rules and giving ourselves permission to eat all foods unconditionally and as you are starting on this uh, process, depending, and of course, I don't know where you're at on your journey currently when you're listening to this, start small. And if your eating is very chaotic at the moment and there's no rhyme or reason and, and it just feels a bit all over the place, sometimes what needs to happen before you go into this place is to start eating regularly, you know, three meals a day few snacks in between if that's what you need and how and, and sort of keeping to that rhythm so that your body gets used to regular food intake that it's not like going long periods of time without food because that can trip us up and then while you're doing that and really working on creating a structured pattern you include foods that you like in that and you might be start bringing in foods that have you know, previously been sort of off the menu and might start bringing some foods that you like, but that you've been maybe scared of eating or, you know, that ha that you've been binging on, but just might start bringing them in alongside, you know, your lunch or your dinner so that we're taking the shine off them. Though that said, the idea or the goal of giving ourselves permission unconditional permission to eat all foods it's not that we are supposed to just eat them and try to get sick of them so we don't want them it's to take the shine of this sort of forbidden fruit but also to create a safe sense of feeling safety so that it's in our body so that it's easier to stop eating when we're feeling comfortably full because our bodies know that food is going to be available available again quite soon or when you get hungry and also to cultivate more discernment so that you are picking foods that 
you like uh, versus what society says you should or some diet plan said you should. And when I think about my own dieting days back back in the day, there were so many foods there on that I just didn't like. And, you know, you're just supposed to, supposed to power through eating stuff that, like, you don't like. And that's just miserable. And, like, since we have to eat several times a day over and over and over for the whole, you know, duration of our lives... Eating shouldn't be, I mean, ideally, it shouldn't be that much of a chore for most of the time. Of course, there's times where, where it, when it is like that, but I, I believe that it shouldn't be a chore for the majority of the time. So I hope this has been helpful. And I suppose there's a lot you can say about this. And there's many nuances that I think for me, sitting here recording this for you, um, sometimes it's hard to touch on all of those because they come up in conversations with people and there's nuances that looks a little bit different for each person. And this is where sometimes working um, through this with somebody else can help you uncover, you know, you might think that you're not dieting, but like there's still a lot of rules hanging out and that is tripping you up. And I do you want to say that if you have already let go of your food rules um, and you're working on, you know, allowing more foods in that's been currently forbidden, I see you and well done you. Like, because it's not easy. And I think it's quite radical in a culture that says, you know, restriction is what we're supposed to be doing. Um, but if if you are doing this and you're feeling kind of stuck and you're feeling that things are just really chaotic still um, as you're allowing more f- food in, what you might need is some support then to move towards more attunement. So, of course, within this, um, which I didn't mention before, moving then towards, you know, becoming more attuned to our hunger and fullness signals and meeting those needs in appropriate ways is also a big part of this work because if we just give ourselves unconditional permission to eat and we allow all the foods in and we're doing all the things and we're throwing the rules out the window that's great that's a a big step but if we then don't couple that at some point with more attunement and reconnecting to our bodies we are probably going to feel like we're stuck in a, a never-ending binge cycle. And that's really not what you want. Like we're, we have to try to move through that into this back from the extreme into this more kind of messy, nuanced, but also more peaceful middle. So if you have any questions, thoughts um, about this particular topic, I would love to hear from you. You can send me an email, connect with me on Instagram or uh, go to the Substack page where this podcast also lives and put some comments in there. But that's, that's all for this week. And thank you again so much for listening and feel free to share it with anybody that you think also might get some benefit out from this. Take care. Thanks for listening. The Joyful Nourishment Podcast is produced with no financial backing and your support means a lot to keep this project going. If this episode has been helpful in any way, please consider liking, subscribing or leaving a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. This helps the podcasts to be found by others. And of course, you can also forward this episode to a friend whom you think may benefit. Find out more about what I offer on straightforwardnutrition.com. And if you're interested in working with me, please use the link in the show notes to book in for a free initial 30-minute session. And finally, please come and join the Joyful Nourishment community over on Substack unless you're there already by subscribing to my newsletter using the link below. Welcome to the Joyful Nourishment Podcast. This is a podcast about our relationship with food and eating, body image, eating disorder recovery, mental health, and more. I am your host, Lynn Thorstensen, a registered nutrition therapist and body image coach based in the West of Ireland. And I'm so glad that you're here.